defend them. He they see with us, as he they see with us, he will defend them. See them pain them. Yeah, he go they see with us, so as he they see with us, he go they pain them. You know, you know, let me tell you something. You know? Listen, listen. You know, as I watch him on television now, he they pain them. Don't be so. And he they sweet there. Ah. When they see me appear like this, it is burn them. <laughs> and I promise them, I'm here to bury them. As he they paint them, he they see with us. As he they rent us, he they pay. Oh, yeah, I said, as he they paint them, he they see with us. As he they see with us, he go they pay. Oh, yeah, yeah, as he they paint them, he they see with us. As he they see with us, he go they pay. Oh, yeah, yeah, as he they paint them, he they see with us. As we get there, yeah. He go bury them. So, as a reverse man, be proud you have a son. Be proud you have a governor who will defend you any day, any time. Here, the federal government came with their might. Did they succeed? Did they succeed? Now, these scavengers go succeed. Okay. And then, Jerry. So, Your Excellency, we're happy with what we're doing for our people and what we we'll continue to do. I said we we'll continue to commission and flag up project till May 29, 2023. Comments um, and some dance steps, if you like, from Governor Wiki there uh, in River State. Um, very, very. Uh, if it, it, it was local, par local parlance, they would say that is shade. Uh, he, he seems to be speaking to some people um, when he says, in quote, um, in pigeon, it pain them, which means in English, you know. Um, some people are pained by some of his actions. And I, we still have um, Femi Lawson, who is a, a public affairs analyst. We're also now joined by a lawyer, um, Oke Unebudum. Good to have you, um, gentlemen, um, join us. Let me come to you, Oke Unebudum. I just wanted to react to some of the comments made there um, by Governor Wike and the issue or the, the reports of a lawsuit now, be, now being filed. He has said he, it's not from him, but just comment on all of that. Thank you. Are you still there? Um, okay, Nebedum. All right, let me get your reaction, um, Femi Lawson. Well, uh, thank you. I think uh, it's also important at this point that uh, we're able to distinguish between any presumed, you know, war or battle, let me use that word mildly, against Governor Wiki and the people of River State. Whatever is the situation now, particularly the serious one. That's a good... Uh, Mr. Femi Lawson, are you still there? Let me lost in if you can hear me. You were responding to my earlier question. If you're there, just continue. All right. Um, okay, do we have you as well? You, you were going to also respond to um, that comment made there by, by Wiki and then the issues around the lawsuit. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Please go ahead. Oh, thank you. So the Supreme Court authorities and every judicial authority respects the primary election of candidates who represent the party uh, party's internal affairs. It is their prerogative to elect who becomes their candidate in any election. So 
it comes under section 285 subsection 9 that anyone who has any issues regarding a particular elective position and the primary health thereby should be able to file the matter in court within 14 days and uh, it has become statute bad for that matter to be entertained in court but you know the court does not make declarations in vacuum and accept and until the matter comes before it that is when the court is ceased of jurisdiction to mention or to take decision upon it and declare it so. So against those who are saying that they are going to court, uh, it doesn't hold what else. It is only when the matter comes to court that that legitimate authority is given to the court to make that pronouncement that it has become statute bad. Be that as it may, it is under the procedures of court, it comes under uh, the originating summons, which requires that you file your summons and then the grounds for which the summons are, for, uh, are filed. And then it comes with also a affidavit. The affidavit are to be sworn by the person who is the applicant. In that situation, it goes to question uh, the legitimacy of the matter being filed in court. I don't have a copy of the suit. Otherwise, one would have known who and in whose name was the affidavit filed into court? Who is the deponent to those facts deposed to in that affidavit? And then whose signature is there? Once these facts are confirmed, we will know whether the disclaimer the governor himself issued is true or not. And mm. of course, no lawyer goes to court without the, uh, being briefed, you know, and instructed by a, uh, a litigant. So I think until one sees the uh, processes that are filed into court, it cannot be overlooked that an applicant wouldn't swear to an affidavit by himself, deposing it before a commissioner for justice, uh, commissioner for, and then signing in presence of the commissioner for it. So I think it is that particular document that will know whether the dispute is true or false, or whether it was playing politics and taking evidence uh, for a right. It is such a serious thing to be in government and especially through democracy being elected. Uh, we don't want a situation where these um, people who find that the corridors of power begin to throw the mandate of the Nigerian people with ridicule and trivialize it into a dancing or a comical effect. Mm -hmm. I think leadership is just than that and the kind of thing that was displayed in Portugal. Well, let me ask you, because you mentioned um, issues around 10 days that it takes, I mean, after the, after the primary of the party, primaries of the party, um, those aggrieved have, would have to file their suit or their grievances within 10 days. Does that mean that um, if this lawsuit does exist, that it is dead on arrival because it is now more than 10 days um, that primaries took place? Um, the question was for you, okay, Nebedum. All right, Femi Lawson, I understand um, we have you now. Uh, but he, I, I was going to ask that question to um, okay, Nebedum because he's a lawyer. I wanted him to clarify um, even just whether this, this case would, would stand the test of time or this case would even stand in the first place because he mentioned issues around 10 days. But let me come to you in terms of the internal wranglings in the PDP. You had the comments made by Wike at the inauguration where you, have, where you had the, um, the, the Speaker of the House of Representatives. He talks about how he wanted to sabotage the aspiration of the Speaker to become the Speaker of the House of Reps. But those I held, held the meeting with are those who worked against him to ensure that the Speaker be, um, was elected as the House of uh, Reps, um, Speaker of the House of Reps. And then when the Speaker was also talking, he did say that those who um, Governor Wiki had that meeting with were also those who worked against him um, in terms of his uh, pre um, presidential bid in the party. I mean, I just wanted to make sense of that, of what's going on within the PDP, if you, sense, if you have any sense of, um, if you think that there is an internal sabotage going on within um, that party. Well, I don't uh, want to describe that as an internal sabotage. What is happening, what Governor, Governor Wiki claimed to have done, trying to halt the emergence of 
Mr. Gwajabi Amila as a spouse of Revs or whatever Mr. Gwajabi Amila have said of uh, some people who now, you know, who are now assumed to have been standing against the aspiration of the governor are uh, you know, tendencies that are inherent in the average Nigerian politicians. And you could also remember that at that same point yesterday, the speaker you know, said it openly that there is no permanent friend, there is no permanent enemy, but what brings politicians together is the permanent interest. And when you talk about this interest, it is usually about the interest of individuals, individual ambitions and aspirations. Most times it is not even about the people because when you don't want to talk about the people in the context of what is currently happening within the PDP, I've not seen uh, any fundamental expression of uh, no grievances from the people of River State. We have also seen leaders of PDP in River State coming out to express their support for the decision of the PDP to choose uh, vice president, former Vice President Atikwa Baka as a candidate and Governor Koa as, a, as his running mate. So it's about the interest of these politicians. And I don't think it is enough for us to, you know, to, to, to think that this has fundamentally, you know, going to impact on, of course, on the people of River State. Whatever position, you know, Governor Wilke is taking today has more to do about his ambition personally to become the president or the vice president, which has not been able to secure, you know, the candidacy through his party. And uh, of course, whatever he may have done to this uh, speaker in the course of his attempt to emerge as a speaker was also really what any politician could have done. Politicians in APC at one point, of course, in time, you know, ganged up against you know, the then president of uh, the country, Dr. Jonathan, and was unable to produce his preferred leadership in the National Assembly. So it is not new. It is not new that Governor Wuke did what he claimed to have done, or of course, he's not finding friends around people who he claimed to have stood at one point or the other against. It's about the fact that now their interest seems to be aligning, going in the same direction. But let's, I think this has to be judged more on the interest of the people. What really is the interest of the River State people? Is it about having you know, their son as a vice president or having you no know, more dividends of democracy delivered to them by their governor or whoever you know, emerge as president of Nigeria or vice president in 2023? I think that is the ultimate. Mm. And what do you think that this will mean for the PDP going forward into the election? Um, there are those who, who say that, look, the PDP seems to, seems to be, um, in terms of the conversation, or, or whether, whether on social media or just around the country, um, th there are just two names that are dominant, two presidential candidates in terms of names that are dominant in conversation. And that perhaps in this election, we might see PDP come third if they don't put their house in order. Um, what, what do you make of that? <laughs> I think majorly we must attach some seriousness to, to that view beyond the social media. But the social media is playing a very fundamental role ahead of the 2023 general election. But we must also look beyond you know, those views that have been shared on the social media to the realities on the street and on the ground. The truth, as we speak, is that the 2023 election of course, it's going to be a contest majorly between the All Progressives Congress and the PDP. Of course, we have an emerging thought force. Of course, six months is a long time in politics. Things can change between now and February that we will have the presidential election. But if election were to be conducted today, you and I know that this election is going to be between Ashura Dibola Metinubu and former Vice President Atipa Baka, who is the candidate of the PDP. So we cannot just, you know, assume that uh, because of the division in the PDP, it may be raising, raising toward in this race. Every political parties have their issues. Today, a lot of controversies around the choice of you know, candidate and running mates in the All Progressives Congress. But it is not enough for us to assume that APC will come toward in the election. I think uh, it's beyond that. It's beyond what we are seeing on the social media. And you, you, you disagree with those who think that um, um, someone like Peter Obi has better chances than an Atiku Abubakar in this election and that perhaps the, P the PDP may have lost their winning streak. No, 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 I, I, th I think it's a mere hallucination for anyone to assume. And you also remember that the same Dr. Peter Obi had tried to become the candidate of the PDP until a few months ago that he 
dumped the PDP for the Labour Party, where is now the candidate? So if PDP had not had that potential, the capacity, and the structure, you know, to actually win the presidential election in Nigeria, Dr. PDP would not have spent so much time in the party, waiting to be candidate of the party until it looks like he was not going to get it and he left for the Labour Party. So PDP is more viable, just like the really all progressive Congress, and they are very much more you know, likely to, pre to produce the next president of Nigeria. And you don't think that um, Peter will be left with some supporters from the PDP because there are those who also insinuate that, look, some of the, a huge part of his support base, although we see that young people seem to be rallying around him, but a, a huge part of that support base also comes from the PDP um, because they, they feel like, look, supporters who were, those who were supporters in the PDP actually moved with him um, in, uh, to the Labour Party. But politicians in Nigeria are naturally nomadic. You know, politicians will find in APC today, don't be surprised that in the next couple of weeks, a lot of them will be in PDP. Some of those in PDP today are already filing their forms to join the APC. But for Dr. Peter Obi, I think majorly his support base today is from the constituency of younger people, mostly people who are going to be first time voters in Nigeria. And of course, some politicians from the PDP may have gone you know, to, with him to the Labour Party. But the question is, are there no other politicians from other parties also joining the APC as we speak? Are there no politicians from other parties joining the PDP as we speak? So like I said, politicians are nomadic. They can be found anywhere at any given point. But that Dr. Peter will be left with some supposed you know, uh, members from the PDP. It's not enough to say that the PDP is polarized or is broken by the exit of Dr. Peter Obi. Between the time Dr. Peter Obi left, you know, and now a lot of people, including former governors, senators, have joined the PDP. Former Governor Alero of Kedi State joined the PDP. A lot of serving senators have done the ship of their parties to join the PDP. A lot of them have also left for the NMPP, the NMPP and, you know, so it's not static and it is not given that, you know, it must have taken a good number of people away from the PDP and that has now made PDP to come toward a Labour Party raising behind the APC. Hmm. Let me bring um, okay Nebedum to the conversation. I just wanted to speak to um, what we are talking about at the moment. Um, the chances of the PDP in the 2023 election, when you look at the internal wranglings within um, the party, the party members are saying, look, the um, talks are ongoing, everything is, in pro everything is fine. But it doesn't seem, from those, those outside looking in, it doesn't seem like everything is fine. Um, and, and there are people who are saying, look, the PDP might just be the third force now in this election if things are not, um, if things within the party are not resolved, issues within the party are not resolved. What do you make of that thought? Yes, uh, there are a few things that the gladiators, I, I call them gladiators, the APC and the PDP, although they are Siamese twins, once uh, two sides of one coin, because uh, if you consider the election of 2015, APC, when it came in, uh, despite the alliances, although a great chunk of the alliance was uh, uh, formidable because of uh, the group called the new PDP, which got infused into the APC, and then they, they were able to make um, a great impact together. But that does not remove the fact that uh, you have the Labour Party and the moves it's making right now. But I must say to Nigerians that um, we forget, or we seem to forget that the presidential election in Nigeria or the mandate of the president of Nigeria coming from the vote is coming through a direct ballot. There are no clearing houses anymore. What I mean by that is it, there are no delegates. It is not a collegiate election. Rather, it is a vote coming directly from the over 100 uh, polling units in throughout the country of Nigeria. We have voters who go and cast their ballots directly for the presidential candidate of their choice. There are no tributaries. There are no, uh, you know, agencies. There are no um, clearing houses. You understand mm. me? When that is done, you understand that the level of influence you have over some people will depend on how much they judge the hunger they are suffering today and the misgovernance of the PDP and the APC or whatever party they call it of eight years ago and whether they want to come out from those and listen to the new wave of message 
which as it seems right now, the message of the candidate of the Labour Party is resonating with the youth who we just celebrated yesterday as International Youth Day. And we agree that they have 65% of the population of this country, of 200 million people. How many people got to vote? If you consider the, uh, the recent elections, presidential elections, it ranges between 12 to 13 million votes during the presidencies. And let, if you let, me jump in, this... let me jump in here, uh, Mr. Nebedum, because when you say 65 percent, I'm sure you are talking about um, um, the youth population. But let's not also forget that in that 65 percent, there are people who are not up to 18 years and they cannot vote. Um, and let's not also All forget right. that the people who have not registered um, for, for they are not registered for um, their PVC. They didn't, they didn't register for the PVC. And then so they cannot vote. So let's say we're left with another percentage, maybe about 40, um, 30 percent in that percentage. Just a minute. There are those youths who are also members of the APC and there are youths who are members of the PDP and the NPP and NPP and other parties. So that leaves us with just maybe a few percent left. Maybe those are the ones that are now um, um, who are supporting. Of course, we've seen a huge, a huge population of young people supporting Peter Abbey. But when you look at this, um, personality is playing a role. Party is also playing a role. And there are those, um, I think it's somebody, I can't remember who said that last week, who said um, it looks like the Peter Abbey would do better than even an article in this election. Do you agree with that when you look at the party structure? What I'm saying in effect is that the answer to your question, there is any database which comes up with the demography that the youth population between 18 and 45 is about 51% of registered voters. It, it is another question for another day whether those population are able to get their PVCs. You understand me? Mm. And I agree with you that in that particular population, there are those who are members of some political parties. Now we're standing whether you are members. I am talking about the votes. Because people can be members of any political party, but they can vote any candidate of their choice. That is what I'm saying. The casting of the vote for the presidency is a direct ballot. Mm. It does not go to hold water completely that because and on the grounds that they are members or that they are supporters of a particular uh, candidate, that they are going to vote for those candidates. You understand? The point I'm making also is... All the right. fact that there are uh, there have been a regime, both the APC or you call it All the right. PDP, whatever, you have been there shopping around uh, in the presidency, shopping around in the gubernatorial um, ticket, shopping around even in the Senate. Well, they are not there different. is, there is I, I hate to jump in, but we do have to go because of time. Um, there's a lot to watch out for. Um, I mean, it's, it's about six months before the elections. So we'll see how things go. Everyone has the uh, has still has enough time to garner supporters. I will see where the supporters are leaning in six months' time. Thank you so much for talking to us, okay, in Nibidum, lawyer, and also we had earlier public affairs analyst um, Femi Lawson. Thank you, gentlemen, for talking to us. You've been watching Political Standpoint. We'll have a repeat at 11 p.m. today and then 5 a.m. on Sunday morning. Thanks for watching. Thank you.